The manipulation of the South African rand by the financial institutions has resurfaced, but the accusations are even more severe than they were years before. The newly surfaced information has revealed that close to 30 banking institutions comprising both domestic and internationally headquartered institutions colluded between 2007 and 2017 to manipulate the rent against a number of currencies. Now this has affected many people's livelihoods. Bahai Tsudumelan, good evening. My name is Tambo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined via Zoom by Rech Ngos, who is an economist and is here to give us a better understanding of the rent manipulation saga that has been making the rounds for weeks now. Uh, Reg, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us. Welcome to the show this evening. Thanks for having me, Tao. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, there's been quite uh, a lot of uh, wording, if I may put it that way, rent manipulation, collusion uh, throughout the past uh, weeks. Maybe let's try to break it down for an ordinary uh, uh, South African, you know, on what the whole issue of rent manipulation is and you know how it came about and what we know so far yeah firstly let's try to to define what this manipulation is rent manipulation essentially there are two types of manipulation there's what we may call a state manipulation of the rent this is a case where the state wants to deliberately lower the rent so it can boost exports. In other words, the boosting of exports will generate growth in the economy, will generate wealth in the economy, and of course, they will also be attending to issues of inflation nicely, so that there isn't any challenge to the economy as a whole. That's the first type of manipulation of the currency. Uh, some countries like China have done that, you know, that manipulation, well, essentially, it's not even supposed to be called manipulation because that's the way a country seeks to improve the lives of people. So people can benefit, the entire country can benefit. Now, the second type of manipulation is this artificial influencing of the currency in a particular direction for purposes of profitability to one or two players in the foreign exchange market. This is what has been happening today, or rather started happening in 2001, late 2001, and it stopped a bit and started therefore thereafter, and we're having it right now. This is a case where some players, now the banks, are beginning to play around with the RAND with a view to disadvantaging the country but advantaging themselves for the purpose of their own profitability. Mm. I mean, um, you know, you, you, you clarified it, I think, that way then we're able to understand it. But, you know, I want to take you back to, before we get to some of the banks that are involved, I mean, we know that in 2001, uh, former President Thabo Mbeki uh, set up the RAND Commission uh, to the RAND manipulation at that time. Um, the currency was um, at around 7 Rand 60 to the US dollar, and it went up to 13 Rand 48 to the US dollar there. The commission did manage to arrest uh, the uh, collapse of the rand at that time, you know, but uh, how it was shut down was also questionable because some of the banks or companies that were involved in uh, that whole saga uh, were actually did not face any consequences. Uh, are we likely to see this happening again? Uh, <laughs> very much unlikely. You remember the RAND Commission when it was set, it should have gone the full hope. It never did. It was almost a whitewashing mm. of that incident. And one of uh, the, you know, the, the, the finance ministers says, well, we don't want to destabilize the financial sector, you know, which eventually would mean losing confidence of the financial sector and obviously losing confidence in the economy. But that's a very poor understanding, Tavo, of, um, uh, of banking basically in this country and in many other countries in the developing world you you you, you destabilize nothing because banks are operating the licenses given to them by government 
you know, so you cannot allow any person to become careless with the public good. Banking is a public good. It's not just a, one of the services that we get. So, you know, so the, the, that did not, uh, sadly, is not, well, it did arrest. Nothing happened. But I don't think this may be the case this time around because I think people are now very much aware and they're very much annoyed that there are some players here who are deliberately sabotaging the country and indeed the people. Mm. I mean, uh, you, you know, there's quite a lot of banks that are, uh, uh, have been named here, or some of the major banks in the country. Let's talk about them. Uh, which banks are, uh, 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 you know, have been listed as part of uh, colluding for rent manipulation there. And there's, there's a notion that, uh, you know, banks profited uh, one trillion uh, per day, which a lot of people are saying that it seems implausible, uh, you know, saying that it's actually not possible. I'm not sure, maybe you can clarify that for us. Uh, when they talk about one trillion rent, is it true? And, and, and also, uh, how did that happen? Yeah, th th thanks very much. I think uh, the profiting is not about one trillion rands. It could be about the transactions, the volume of the transactions that took place uh, you know, during that time that uh, amounted to about a trillion rand. Remember, this uh, foreign exchange business is about now close to six to seven trillion dollars. Mm. Okay? That obviously is multi trillion rand. So the transactions, I think, that happened here will be in the regions of about a trillion rand, according to the assessment made by the, the Competition Commission. So it's not the profit at all. It is, uh, I think, the turnover of that transaction. Now, you asked about the names of the banks. There are quite many. I can't even remember. Mm. But we have a few um, domestic banks, Standard Bank, Absta, Investec, and, and, and so on. Of course, uh, these are domestically domiciled, and the others, many of them, are foreign domic domiciled. So they're not citizens of the Republic, these banks. They're citizens of the US, citizens of the UK, and so on and so forth. Like, I mean, French banks are there as well. So yes, the list is long. It's about 28. I've already forgotten all the names in there. That's quite long. Uh, Rachel Gossi, I want us to take a quick breather. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to touch on, uh, you know, some of the comments uh, that have been going on, particularly looking at uh, uh, what uh, people have termed this a coordinated uh, regime change attempt. I want to get your comment on that. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in tonight, we are discussing the topic of rent manipulation with the economist Regin Gossi, who is here to really deepen our understanding of it. And he joins us uh, via Zoom. Uh, Reg, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, uh, you know, before we just get into some of uh, the issues that uh, we did highlight in the uh, before we went to the ad break, I want to know what impact does the currency manipulation have on ordinary citizens in general? Yeah, uh, firstly, it really depends how much the currency has been affected. Uh, it's not necessarily easy to quantify the cost of such uh, actions on the economy, but obviously there are some costs, many. And remember that uh, the exchange rate is the price of a currency, all right? Which means that if the rand is seven rand sixty today, all right, and it goes suddenly to thirteen rand, which is almost double, yeah. it means if you are buying some goods from the U.S. for the consumption of citizens in the country, you're no longer paying seven rand; you are paying fourteen rand. So. As a trader yourself or myself, I'll add a markup there. So that what I was buying yesterday or today or this morning at seven rand, I'm now suddenly buying it at, at 15 rand, at 18 rand. That means impoverishing me, a person who is already poor. So the economy suffers extraordinarily in, uh, in regard to such activities as the manipulation of the currency. But also not just that. Because this country fights inflation using the interest rate, 
then the country has to raise the interest rate. And you know what that means then? Mm. It means the that you and me have are going to be paid at a higher rate. The bonds that we're, we're paying in our, for our houses are going to be more expensive. It also means the government debt itself that we service, that um, has to be serviced, is going to be higher. Therefore, there's going to be less and less money for economic activities just because some people have decided to play around with the rent. So the economic devastation can be massive. It's got significant economic implications, all of whom are visually negative. And therefore, we should take this issue very, very seriously. Mm. So um, what do you make of uh, the comments uh, that uh, this somewhere somehow was a coordinated regime change attempt uh, by uh, all these banks, uh, you know, to just overthrow the current sitting government? A while back, I, I wrote somewhere that um, the current macroeconomic framework, which includes the monetary policy, is actually a coordinated effort by those who uh, impose that system on us to destroy the economy. Mm. Right. Now, this aspect of currency manipulation falls within the Reserve Bank, which is a monetary policy issue. Well, obviously, I'm not going to go in the public and say, well, indeed, that seems to be coordinated effort. You have to say that after you have actually perhaps seen some evidence. So I'll be giving efforts for, a regime, uh, efforts for a regime change. But quite frankly, it's very, very worrying. And I think that the macroeconomic policy of which monetary policy is part is itself uh, an effort to destabilize the economy. Quite frankly, it is not intended to support this economy in any way. Hence, we have been suffering for almost ever since, actually, since this uh, macroeconomic framework was put to use in 1996. Remember, South Africa hasn't actually improved. And uh, despite the efforts of some civil servants, the system has really worked against us. So I would say, therefore, that, uh, you know, I'm not sure to say this act itself is a coordinated, but, you know, it, it, it does, um, you know, affect us quite negatively. And I think those who think it is a coordinated effort have perhaps uh, some, you can understand why the things. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, Reg, it also boggles the mind that uh, uh, we know that central banks uh, worldwide, uh, including South Africa, have got mechanisms in place to, you know, place counter to such uh, uh, long-term actions and keep the currency stable. But it seems like somewhere, somehow, we were sleeping as a country. Uh, also, just maybe somewhere, somehow, we were oblivious to what was happening. I don't know. I don't want to use your word that we're sleeping or even oblivious. Uh, you know, the role of the Reserve Bank, as we have said, is to stabilize the price of the currency. It has, therefore, to be very awake daily, okay? And they have mechanisms to uh, check who is doing what, where. But now, let's divide this market again, uh, Tabo. Essentially, the foreign exchange market is divided into two. The first one is what we call the onshore, onshore market, and the second one is called the offshore market. Mm -hmm. The offshore market is a market that, you know, they trade on the rent somewhere in Hong Kong, London, New York, and so on and so forth. All right. Those players doing it on their own day without uh, really participation of uh, some of our banks, maybe one or two. The onshore one, okay, the offshore one is not very easy for a reserve bank to monitor. I'm saying not easy, but not that it cannot, it can. It's a choice of the reserve bank. Okay, now the onshore market, uh, where our local banks and other foreign banks continue to trade the rent, is supposed to be monitored almost every single second by the Reserve Bank. Whether the Reserve Bank was paying attention to this, we do not know. It's surprising. And they tell us it's about the Competition Commission. Forget about the Competition Commission. Mm. The I, which is in charge of the Competition Committee, has no duty at all in checking the daily movements of this currency. All right? That it is helping on the, on the competition side is another story, but it is the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank has got tools. And if it doesn't have tools to uh, monitor the offshore market, what it can do is it can work 
with officials in Hong Kong, in London, and so on, to establish who is doing what to the currency. Remember, the moment they touch the rand, they're touching the citizen of this country. Yeah. All right? They're touching the economy of this country. You cannot, therefore, be reluctant or oblivious to the fact that somebody is touching you as a person. It's like somebody touching your back and you say, you don't worry, and continue to move. So, quite frankly, the Reserve Bank's uh, approach has been not only shocking, but really undermining the intelligence of South Africans by saying, no, uh, you know, it is for the competition commission, not us. Quite frankly, that's nonsensical. Mm. Because I was about to ask that, but we will uh, just wrap up the conversation on the other side. Also touch on them, as you said, there is a bank somewhere somehow, you know, should have uh, actually came out with a clear message on this issue. But I want us to take a quick ad break. We're coming back to wrap up the conversation on the other side. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. We have reached the end of the show as we've been discussing the topical issue that has been uh, the rent manipulation, looking at the implications and effects of the matter to ordinary citizens. Reg Ngosu is an economist, is still joining us uh, via Zoom. Reg, thanks again for uh, staying on. I mean, um, as we wrap up the conversation uh, this evening, I want us just to talk about... Uh, um, you know, as you said, that we, you, we've been talking about the Reserve Bank's role also in, uh, you know, monitoring such issues. But uh, I, I'm also interested in finding out why is government um, not being able to communicate a clear message? I mean, we heard mixed messages from Treasury also when it comes to the issue of, of rent manipulation, just refuting certain allegations, saying this and that. Um, what do you make of, of uh, this type of an approach? to a very serious matter like this yeah indeed it's a very serious matter and we should have had a, a coordinated response by government and that government will either be coming from the presidency or the ministry that is charged with financial matters which is the treasury remember the reserve bank operates under the treasury it is this minister of finance who is essentially the man behind financial affairs of this country and they are the persons who are supposed to be giving us a sense. Unfortunately, they have been so lackluster. If you go back in history, Kata Nene has also you know, issued statements which were quite um, uh, 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 unforgiving. Titombo Weni went at some point to say, give us evidence, when in fact Maria Ramos had accepted that uh, the, you know, it's all over the press, that you know, ABSA got involved in the, in the in currency manipulation, and that the government is tiptoeing around this matter tells us that something must be seriously wrong with government. Mm. Is it government that's captured? Or individual persons within government and the Reserve Bank that are captured? Or are they so incompetent as not to worry about the lives of the South Africans? What is it? So I think uh, citizens must certainly be worried. And we must all worry and ensure that all these players as hold, not just before the court, hold before the parliament, and we must act quite, uh, you know, uh, firmly to ensure that we have one story. Remember presidency, uh, uh, Sister Kumbuzo Nchabeni did issue a statement, all right, of her understanding on how she, uh, she looks at this. Mm -hmm. We have finance ministry, you know, keep towing around it. The Reserve Bank, you know, blaming someone else, not them. This is a national issue of national, in it's an issue of national interest. We must have one voice. You cannot be told, no, the, 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 the rand manipulation does not affect the, the economy. There are just one or two players, who, the clients of the bank. That, quite frankly, is unacceptable. And we should, in fact, force the government to tell us, quite frankly, what was happening and bring to book, quite urgently, all these people who, who began to mess our lives up. Mm. I mean, we saw the United uh, Kingdom-based bank, uh, the Standard Chartered Bank, also agreeing uh, you know, to, I mean, just pleading guilty to being involved in the collusion. And then they've been fined 42 million uh, rands. Is this a fair amount, you know, judging by the impact it has made to the rand and how big uh, the bank is? Uh, because I saw they did the same thing um, in, in the U.S. a few years ago. And then, you know, they, they were actually fined quite a heavy amount, which is just almost... Uh, uh, just over a quarter of, uh, of, 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 of uh, I mean, 
it was over 500 million, if I may put it that way. Yeah, well, uh, I wrote uh, not long ago in a newspaper wondering whether this is indeed fair uh, uh, punishment or not. I think it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a fair punishment. The same banks have paid a great deal in the U.S., in hundreds of uh, millions of dollars, in dollars. So these are billions of rands, okay? And, and in fact, some fines amount to $4.3 billion, $2.3 billion mm. fines relating to, to, to currency manipulation. So I, I personally feel that uh, we should have had a stiffer, a stiffer penalty to tell them, to give them a warning that next time it's going to be different, even worse. In fact, we should be revoking the licenses of these people. Quite frankly, they're not doing us any favor. They're doing themselves a favor. Why should we allow them punish citizens and they are laughing to the bank when all of us are collapsing in our debts and so on? Frankly, in my view, the punishment is not good enough. Mm. Just before I let you go, uh, Reg, um, how do you see this playing out now? I mean, now we know the Competition uh, Commission released that pre preliminary report uh, there, but uh, I mean, we've been talking that also the Reserve Bank somewhere somehow needs to uh, come up with a clear message there. How do we see this playing out? And also, uh, will we see more fines being issued? And I mean heavy fines, as you said, that we need to send a clear message that, uh, you know, what you did was in fact wrong. You've definitely affected uh, this country to a point that, uh, I mean, ordinary citizens are struggling to even make ends meet uh, as we find ourselves in this situation. How do you see this playing out? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's anybody's guess given the fact that we have conflicting statements from the government. The one arm of government, which is the Reserve Bank, talks this story. The one other government department, the Finance Ministry, talks another story. The President has got this. It seems to me there is some form of capture that uh, we, 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 we're experiencing here. If it is not capture, then one of the worst incompetence this government has shown itself to be. Now, how DTI's competition commission is going to play this game out, we do not know. But we should, in fact, be a collectively as citizens, saying DTI must find them heavier. But they may say, well, you know, you find the Standard Chartered Bank 47 or 42, uh, City Bank some 41 or whatever, it's not much. Why should you find us billions? Again, unfairness creeps in. But what we should be saying going forward is that either to take away their licenses, they're not doing us a favor, and 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 oh shutting them off from our markets so the way this is going to play out is it's not clear it's not very very clear again because the government's uh, the government itself is conflicting has got is issuing too much conflicting messages to to us but i think the citizens are unanimous in my view the way we've been looking at it that they must be punished quite dearly Regent Gossi, much appreciated very insightful uh, you know, you've actually cleared things uh, for us uh, this evening. Much appreciated for coming to the show. Thank you. That was uh, Rajan Kosi, who is an economist, speaking to us about the rent manipulation saga that has been very topical over the past few weeks, giving us an understanding of which the banks are implicated. How long has it been happening and what it means for ordinary citizens? Can its consequences be fixed or reversed? And how will you know the impacted banks be brought to book? Because you know banks that have been accused of manipulating the rent, they um, you know they 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 have not had uh, you know time to be fined actually uh, heavy sums. You talk about the issues of uh, 43 million rands, which is actually a drop in the ocean. I mean, uh, he did uh, speak, uh, you know, talk about the issue of all of us as a country, we need to be worried about this. Who's fooling who? There's conflicting messages from government, from the South African Reserve Bank. We don't know what's going to happen with this issue. Uh, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of So Where to Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at sowetotoday at sowetotv.co.za or you can simply just uh, call us or WhatsApp us the number 081-531-8857. For myself and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobol is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.